Although it is a light, agile craft when viewed from the bow, the Cervedo looks overly wide and coarse. It seems squat and heavy. When seen in profile, however, the vessel is peerlessly dignified. Why is it that standing freely and unstayed, Cervedo masks rarely break? This is due to the peerless quality of the wood from which they are made. The integration and self-protection provided by the sails and masts of the Cervedos are perfect for various sea and wind conditions. The masts, which can stand higher than 20 meters and weigh over a ton, are set at a pronounced angle, leaning aft and protected by their own weight. How cool is this book? I, however, don't know or have never known how much of this book I should literally take into practice with the rebuild of Yabat, as of course, this doesn't look 100% like ours. I think Yabat is a slightly modernized version of these old Savedos, but I thought it would be really fun to bring up the fact that these boats initially didn't have standing rigging and the, the masts were just held up by themselves, by their own strength. However, I would like to have some standing rigging. So the boat already came with four shrouds per mast and I would like to keep it that way as we are planning to put quite a bit of stress on the masts. So in this episode, we are gonna start working on the standing rigging. Now that is going to be a big challenge because every little sign of where the standing rigging used to go has been completely destroyed, except for some small fractions of videos and pictures we have, which are that clear. So stay with us while we start working on the chain plates. While the sun's out, I would really like to start working on stuff on the deck. And the first job that I have to do when it's sunny and dry <clears throat> is this. A while ago, I just made these little battens. There's a really long one over here as well. You see how long it is. They go literally in front of those windows all the way around on the deck or the roof of the superstructure. So I'm just going to put them in place now with a bunch of Sikaflex uh, fastened down with screws. Of course, I might need to just prep the wood over there a bit, clean them. But other than that, that should be a quick job and it has to be dry. The next job I would like to do, it's going to be a huge and a very important job, is the standing rigging. So I'm just going to get this in and then we'll head over to the standing rigging and I'll explain a bit more about it. First thing I want to do, of course, you can see there's a bunch of white paint sticking up. That's why I just quickly put this in place. I'm going to do the same for the sides and then sand all that white paint away so it's all nice and woody. And then I can start working with all the sticky stuff. So without further ado, let's go. go over very quickly, clean it, and then I think it can get messy. I think I stuck the tape slightly too close to the wood. So when I tightened it, it really almost tucked behind the wood, which I didn't want at all. So I'm gonna maybe go over it again, just to make a nice, I think you call it a bevel. Just a nice little filler in the corners. Uh, and it dried in, I think, three minutes, which uh, I know now. So good thing we did the test on the biggest, longest and hardest one. Now we can do the small one.
I'm super happy with how this turned out. It's practically dry already. Today's like 35 degrees Celsius with sun and the seekage dried in the instant. So Rafa's taking on the next job already, which is adding the plugs to it, which is a really good thing. It just avoids any future rain to already get stuck in there. So it's really nice that that's been done already and that all these are not being stored in the boat anymore. Something else that's being stored in the boat is the chain plates and the stay or shroud tensioners, which is something that I'm going to start working on right now. Get them from downstairs, or at least find them downstairs, bring them up and figure out where they go first. That's two. Come here, look, you can help me. Three. I seriously can't wait to have all this in place. Four. Five. Six. Eight. They're all very similar. The little corners here, the, at least the angles are different. I have noticed these six over here have big holes for the uh, tensioner to go on and these don't. If I am not mistaken, the rest of the mess, the rest of the stainless tensioners should be with the rest of the mess that we're currently storing in here. Two, three, four, I've only found four pieces for now. These over here belong to the stays of the bowsprit. And I found a little, I don't know which antenna, but it's an antenna holder from the mast. It's really that looks cool. cool. I'm sure we'll need it at some point. All the rest is going to stay in this mess hole for another time. Down here in the boat, I have managed to get together eight chain plates and eight tensioners. So these were all here before. All the tensioners are the same. Chain plates, however, are they're just a little angle difference in all of them. So very simply, the bottom this uh, the bottom screws fasten onto the cover board at the top. Fine. This small one fastens onto the rail. There's a pin that goes through here, and that fastens onto the stick. While we're working a lot of jobs on the boat, you guys have all asked what is Nico doing? Nico is doing an amazing job with a lot of varnishing, lots of finishing touches around the boat. One thing he's working on now is the pilot house windows, or at least around it, making it look nice as we've now finished working on them. And one piece that has been hanging around that I would love to install, and I think it's one of the pieces with the nicest grain in the entire boat, is that. Now this was a simple step, it had a little plank on top which we will put again, it was just nailed on. And this is just a step that was on each side of the forward windows here of the pilot house just to get on the roof. So I think we're going to install this again. Very straightforward, one screw through here, one screw through here. I was really hesitant between using Sikaflex or epoxy. Now I'm leaning towards epoxy as lots of weight is going to be put on it. To fasten these onto the wood, I was going to use epoxy. However, I think that's not good in case I want to remove it or work on the windows or whatever. So what I've chosen for is not to use this, but to use that and use Sikaflex instead. So I've just clamped the sunk the hole a bit bigger than it was, nicely through it, and let's go to install them. We've got both of these in place now. I would like to have a little pad on top. It had it before and I'd like to put it again. Just a little extra step, a little extra surface. Very happy how this went. I worked faster than I did with this white seeker because of uh, the heat. Also the camera keeps turning off saying, too hot, time to cool down. That's done. Nico's gonna continue working on the varnishing. See how it's all nicely sanded up there while I go and start thinking and frying my brain even more about how those shrouds well, chain plates are going to be fastened. What we have started off doing is figuring out where, if you were to take a perpendicular line 
from the mast to starboard and to port where it would touch on the bulwark. So all we're doing with that is we've got a really long piece of wood, let's call it a batten, that we are holding against one side of the mast, uh, like aft of the mast, figuring out where, how to make it perpendicular by using other parts of the boat as reference. Then we bring it to the other part of the mast, the forward part of the mast, and do the same thing. That literally gives us a nice drawing of the bulwark of uh, where the mast is on both sides. One thing we realized from the start with these chain plates is we are going to have the bend in a different area, probably a bit lower. The reason for that is that the bulwark in our boat has been made slightly higher before it was fully closed. So you didn't have any of the open bits of the spindles. However, it was a bit lower. In order to do so, I brought the chain plate next door and they have made them completely straight. Now, the reason for that is because we want this little ring where the stainless wire tensioner is fastened onto just to stick above the bulwark and the rest under. So we are gonna place this, like make all the incisions and cuts needed and put this facing downwards and then make the last little bend later on wherever the uh, lowest bit has to be fastened against the hole. Nico's been great help by helping me define where the center is of the mast outside wise or to the outside. Now I just have to define the distance I want from one of these to the next one. Now we don't have any measurements from before. I might be able to go and find some battle wounds in the scrap pile to figure that out. But I've gone on the other schooners, at least the, the, fit, the mastered schooners and the common size between both is 76 centimeters. Some have got 80. I know the wider they are, the better, like the stronger or the most strength it offers the mast. However, you also don't want it too wide. So I think 80 will be the sweet spot for us. And uh, once I decide that, or once we decide that, I can already start fitting these onto the boat. And there's only eight of them, so that shouldn't take too long. I mean, it'll definitely take too long, but it'll be fun. <laughs> I have one hole in here now and it came out slightly where I wanted it. I mean, it is a lot smaller than I need, so I'm gonna open it wherever I need to. Quite nerve wracking. Uh, we're just gonna put a wooden little batten in the top now as to use as a guide and then I'm just gonna drill loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of holes until it kind of fits the chain plate in. And once the chain plate fits in from the bottom upwards, I'm gonna just kind of keep drilling where 
well, come down to up through the next two boards later until it fits nicely. And then all I have to do is fasten it, mark it, and then we can bend that last little bit and then properly fasten it with all the seeker flex and stuff. I think that's very happy. So through here and up over there. It's a little bit inwards up here because the top part of the cover board is wider than the bottom. So that makes sense. Ah. about five years in and I finished the first hole on finishing takes a while but we want it to be nice right it is flowing very nicely you can see the sky has turned black it was going so fast I think I should have been able to at least get both of those chain plates in for now except I broke the drill bit inside that 12 centimeter thick piece of wood so I had to go and get a drill bit got stuck in traffic on the way back but now it's like got the hose done in the cover board the hit the holes done in the cover board and it just doesn't fit so I got some sanding paper and uh <laughs> just gonna wrap the sanding paper around the drill bit and just try and open it bit by bit now and then when it fits I can like make it nice and clean because right now you can obviously see many holes have been made and I'm gonna like make it nice and smooth and then we can varnish or epoxy the inside to make it waterproof. But yeah, it's going fast. I burnt myself with the drill bit and then as revenge, I snapped it. There's someone there judging your work. Hey. I think we're gonna have to wrap this up for today. You can see it's literally hate raining. Heavy drops now, and I think looking at the sky, it's gonna start tipping it. So let's shut all the windows. Unfortunately, I just figured out how to do this, but it'll be for another time. Oh well, that's how it goes. That will be on hold until I can uh, until I can make the rain stop one day. Until then, we'll do some other things. I didn't make it in on time. Had to run around the deck to just close the windows and the hatches. Bow locker. I'll have to go and check that out today. But yeah, I don't think we'll be finishing that today. This is going really nicely. It's very slow work on these first two because I've started with a technique, but now I've already figured out a way faster technique that I can do on the other six. Also the ones on there and there. I can probably just do with a jigsaw and of course the drill to make it nice and clean. I'm using a drill bit with sanding, 40 grit sanding paper wrapped around it to just kind of sand and get it nice and smooth. Either way, it's quite funny because as I'm like working on this one, for example, the crib's moving up because they're literally moving this crib over here under that boat. I've got a time lapse going on for you guys. You are, where are you? You're somewhere. No, I'm trying to point. There you are, somewhere. So uh, soon, when this is all the way gone, I'm going to have to find another way to maybe get a scaffolding up here. But anyway, it's going. Oh, Hot dog. Today, got nothing new to talk about, got nothing new to say. Anyway, I fell in love with 
the girl downtown Then she walked away That heart of coal with sticks and stars They put me here today Since you left me right at your door, I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Said and done, now honey, you won. Gonna leave for a while, walk out, out the door, forget my troubles, and move to Memphis, maybe change my name. Ever since you left me, cried at your door, I'll never be the same. Two chain plates 
in place. It took me about two days to do this. I'd say this one took me one and a half days because I was nervous about getting the holes wrong. And that second one took me about half a day because I got the hang of it and I found some better ways. I knew I would. This is literally just dry in place. There's no screws, no lug nuts, no nothing, no counting plates. Uh, just dry in place. I've got six more to go. They're all going to be done like this, hopefully better, and hopefully I'll speed up. Maybe I'll get like three done in a day, maybe four. Uh, you can see this lower bit is just slightly off. That's normal because I had them all straightened. The next step is, once I've done all of them, is mark where I want that bottom bit over here bent. Mark it, measure the angle that I want it bent, send it next door, have them all bent, and come back and start fastening and uh, sealing all of it. Of course, all this is like rough cuts still. I'm gonna make that look really nice. This one over here, of course, the first one is as nice, the second one is way tighter, and so on. We'll keep going like this. Reminds me a bit of the spindles. If you come to the boat ever, you can have a good look at these spindles and see which ones are nicer than the others. Of course, I learned on one of them. And I think there's like 80, maybe 90 on the boat. And uh, over time I got better. Two chain plates in the right place. There's a bunch more to go, of course. However, unfortunately, but not unfortunately at all, is it's gonna be my dad's 70th birthday this week and I'm gonna head over on our holiday with my dad and my brother. So these two chain plates are gonna be the last ones I install until I'm back. But I guarantee you that when I am back, I am gonna work full speed, full determination to get these all in place, fastened, sealed, and try and get them all attached to the shrouds already. And that's gonna be one big check ticked off the list but until then i really hope you enjoyed this episode don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new episodes this journey is only possible thanks to the generosity of our supporters so thank you so much chris for joining us on patreon david and jeff for donating through paypal and duane jens prime kevin michael douglas and alan for leaving us a super thanks your support really means the world to us and thank you all for watching and see you next sunday bye